This video is to show how we made our kids' Halloween costumes this year. Although, of course, you could wear these for anything that wouldn't have to be for Halloween. I want to preface this by saying we are no experts. This is only the second time I have ever sewed anything on the machine I used. But I thought it was pretty easy if I could do it. So, I'm not sure if this will be more of a how-to or how not to, but at least maybe you can benefit from seeing what I did and change it to do it your way. The first thing I decided to do was to go ahead and iron my fabric. Because we have to fuse some interfacing, which is the white stuff that makes the spikes stand up straight, I don't want to fuse it to my fabric and that therefore like make these big wrinkles permanent so i thought the best first thing to do would be iron plus that's what i've always seen my mom and grandma do before they sew something so it must be the way to go <laughs> better already before i talk about interfacing which is this white stuff that fuses to the fabric and it's going to make it nice and stiff so that our dinosaur spikes uh, don't flop over to the side. I wanna talk about why I cut a strip instead of cutting out individual diamonds. And the reason is, um, to save fabric and time, I'm trying to think about it, how would a quilter cut out diamonds? And if you've had somebody in your family that quilts, you know, when they cut out shapes, they try to figure out how can the shape fit together? So that's what we're gonna do right here. So, sorry, this stuff is all off a little bit, but I, I need to pin it, but I think you'll see what I mean. So instead of having your diamond like this or like this on your fabric, you can imagine turning it sideways. And see, when you turn it sideways, then you could take your rotary cutter and cut in this direction and get a bunch of diamonds in one strip without a lot of waste. So, see, imagine there's a line right here then you move over here, you cut another diamond. So you can imagine diamonds down the row right here. And this is where one of these clear um, rulers would come in handy because they have angles on them. Now let's talk about this interfacing. I've seen this at Walmart and I've seen it at Joann's, which I got mine at Joann's. So this is just foam kind of between two pieces of fabric. And on one side, I don't know if you can hear it, it's like this side's really soft and this side's kind of scratchy. This side has um, some kind of glue that you can iron on your fabric and it becomes fused together. And that's what's gonna make our spikes stay standing up. So I have, I figured out how wide of a diamond I'm gonna have, I gave a little extra on each side. And I'm going to line this up really nicely. And then I am going to put a damp cloth. I just have this old tea towel. I'm going to put a damp cloth in between. And the reason they say to use a damp cloth is after about, this is kind of how you time it. Because after about 10 seconds, the cloth should have lost its water. And if it hasn't, that tells you you probably need to turn up your iron a little bit. You don't have to worry about remembering that. Most of these rolls of interfacing you buy are going to come with directions. So look at the directions, see if yours is the same as mine. But So now if you look, my two pieces are together. See, it won't separate there. They have fused together. So now I basically have fabric with this kind of stiffer foam backing. Okay, I wanted to explain something else about how to cut these diamonds. So you've already decided you're gonna have a 60 degree diamond and you've lined it up on your 60 degree line and you've made your first cut. So now you're wondering, how far do I move this this way to get an even diamond? We want ours to be the same length on all four sides. So all you have to do is measure this length and you know you what you want your other lengths to be the same so if this is three and a half 
You just move down three and a half and cut. And then you end up with nice diamonds. What are we doing? So we're gonna line the tips up and fold it into a triangle and we're gonna cut it with pinking shears. Why are we doing that? <laughs> because um, one, it helps stop fraying and two, because I think it looks cute. Okay. The next step is to get your hoodie and you're gonna start, look right, right where the center of your diamond is to the center of the hoodie. So see there's a seam right there you can use. Just dropped one of my diamonds. And you're gonna start lining up your diamonds and pinning them down the hoodie. And I'm gonna overlap mine just a bit because I think that'll be cuter, but you can put them right next to each other or spread them out, whatever you want. I want mine overlapped a little bit. And you want the back to be facing up towards you because you've gotta think when we fold it for the spike, you want your pretty part on the outside. All right, I've got all my spikes pinned on. Like I said, I chose to overlap mine just a tiny bit. Maybe end up right here above this bottom seam, which I liked. And now I'm gonna take my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew all the way down the middle. Be back in just a second. All the way down the middle of my diamonds. Being careful not to sew the front of the hoodie. You don't want to go through both layers of hoodie. And now I have started <coughs> folding my diamonds in half and pinning them in the middle. And let me pick this up and show it to you. It's very hard to do all this stuff with one hand, sorry. See that? And now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sew right here. I'm going to sew the outline of my diamonds. And I will come back and show you what that looks like. So I have sewed all the pieces around the triangles and now we have some pretty cool dinosaur spikes on dinosaur our hoodie. Spikes. I think they look pretty cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, now let's talk about the tail. We wanted our son's tail to be two feet long. So we have went ahead and bonded a strip of fabric to the inner facing that's four feet long because we're basing this on the same way we did the spike. So when you fold it in half, you're gonna end up with half the length that you have right now. And the way you can make a diamond on any square or rectangle is just find the middle of all the sides, mark it, and then draw lines connecting them. So for example, um, if this was seven inches, then three and a half would be the middle. So it's pretty easy to do. So now we're just gonna take our rotary cutter and cut this, and then next we'll add in the spikes. So now we have our tail piece, our really long skinny diamond, and we have our little spike pieces. So <clears throat> the order I'm gonna do this is that I'm gonna go ahead before I sew my tail together on the edges, is I'm gonna go ahead and sew my spike pieces on just so that my sewing machine isn't having to go through even more fabric. And another reason I'm doing it this way is when I do sew around the edges of this tail, at the bottom, and this is just me, I think it looks cute, is I'm gonna be adding in, sorry, it's hard to do all this with one hand and hold the phone. I'm gonna be adding in a little on each side. There'll be one on this side too at the bottom. So that's how we made our kids' dinosaur hoodies. I appreciate you watching, and I hope even if this turned into a what not to do, that it at least helps somebody know maybe what they could change to make theirs different. I appreciate you watching. Bye.